In the vast tapestry of the natural world, where myriad creatures roam the wild, there exists a family known for its strength, versatility, and unmistakable presence, the Ursidae, or more commonly, the bear family. Comprising eight distinct species, this family introduces us to a remarkable variety of bears, extending far beyond the familiar faces of North America's black, grizzly, and polar bears. The remote corners of our planet are home to the enigmatic giant panda of Asia, the elusive sloth bear of the Indian subcontinent, the rare spectacled bear of the Andes, the diminutive sun bear of Southeast Asian forests, and the shadowy Asiatic black bear. Each species, unique in its own right, unveils a fascinating story of adaptation, survival, and life in some of the world's most challenging environments. The North American black bear, Ursus Americanus, more often than any other bear in North America. The North American black bear lives from Florida to Alaska and into Canada. The black bear eats everything, but most of what they eat are plants. When it comes to growth and maturity, male black bears reach their full size around the age of eight, with some tipping the scales at an impressive 280 kilograms, 600 pounds, or even more. On the other hand, female black bears in the dense, verdant expanse of Ontario's boreal forests typically enter mating age and bear cubs when they are between five to eight years old, sometimes older. In terms of longevity, Black bears in their natural habitats have been known to live up to 25 years, with some exceptional cases even surpassing this age. However, the harsh reality of nature and human activities means that many bears do not reach their potential old age. Brown bear, Ursus arctos, Alaska, Western Canada, portions of Washington, Montana, and Wyoming are all home to brown bears. There are a few isolated populations spread out over Asia and Europe. In fact, Russia today has a healthy number of brown bears. A brown bear's coat color can vary from nearly black to a fairly light shade of brown or even blonde. The size of these bears varies significantly, influenced by factors such as latitude and the availability of food in their habitat. Among them, the big browns of the Russian and Alaskan coasts stand as giants rivaled only by the polar bear in sheer size. Meanwhile, the grizzly bears and other mountain-dwelling variants in the North American Rockies and Europe tend to be smaller, a reflection of the challenging environments they navigate. While bears tipping the scales at 1,500 pounds, 700 kilograms, or more were once not uncommon, such sightings have become increasingly rare in modern times. Polar bear. In the world of the bear family, Polar bears stand as towering figures, often regarded among the largest of their kind. An adult male polar bear can reach a staggering weight of up to 800 kilograms, 1,760 elves, showcasing their formidable size and strength. Intriguingly, a study conducted in Ontario revealed the heaviest male bear on record tipped the scales at 654 kilograms, 1,439 elves with male polar bears in the region typically averaging around 500 kilograms, 1,100 ulls. Female polar bears, while still impressive in size, are generally smaller than their male counterparts. It is rare for a female to exceed a weight of 400 kilograms, 880 ulls, with the average female polar bear weighing in at about 300 kilograms, 660 ulls. This size difference highlights the sexual dimorphism prevalent within the species, illustrating the distinct physical characteristics that differentiate male and female polar bears. Asiatic black bear, Ursus thibetanus. Adorned with long, jet black fur, the Asiatic black bear is easily recognizable by the distinctive crescent-shaped white patch on its chest. This species stands out not just for its striking appearance, but also for its remarkably large ears and the unusually long fur that drapes over its neck and shoulders, giving it a unique silhouette among bears. While there is some indication that Asiatic black bears have a greater propensity for meat in their diet compared to their American relatives, meat still constitutes only a small portion of their overall diet. 
These bears have a diverse palate, enjoying a variety of grass, berries, seeds, insects, and honey. As autumn approaches, their dietary focus shifts towards nuts, a crucial change that enables them to accumulate the necessary fat reserves for the winter. In the region with colder northern climates, Asiatic black bears partake in the timeless ritual of hibernation, retreating into a state of dormancy to weather the winter. However, in the milder southern climates where the seasonal changes are less harsh, these bears often remain active year-round, bypassing the need for hibernation. Andean bear, Tremarctus ornatus. The spectacled bear is the only species of bear found in the South American Andes, so the majority of experts call them Andean bears. It is against the law to kill them, since they are a vulnerable species that is in risk of extinction. Of the subfamily Tremarctinae, only the spectacled bear has survived to this day, and it is also the sole bear species indigenous to South America. Even though it only consumes about 5% meat in its diet, the spectacled bear is officially the biggest land carnivore on that continent. While most bears have blackish fur, the color can range from very black to very brown, or even reddish. Although not all spectacled bears have the characteristic spectacle markings, this species is easily recognizable by its characteristic beige markings across the upper chest and face. In terms of size, males are one-third larger than females, and in some cases, twice as heavy. Women can range in weight from 35 to 82 kilograms, 77 to 181 pounds, while men can reach weights of 100 to 200 kilograms, 220 to 440 pounds. Panda bear. For a long time, scientists thought the giant panda belonged to the raccoon family. But thanks to DNA analysis, science was proven to be incorrect. There is no family tree connecting the red panda to the giant panda. Famous for their insatiable appetite for bamboo, giant pandas must eat up to 20 kilograms, 40 pounds, of this nutritionally deficient food every day. The panda's thick mucus coat protects its digestive system from splinters, while the additional digit on its hand aids in tearing bamboo. The biggest factor in the downfall of the giant panda has been the destruction of its natural habitat. As a result, these majestic creatures are now found only in six western Chinese mountain ranges. Giant pandas do not hibernate like other bears do. They descend to lower levels throughout the winter for warmth and ascend to higher ones during the summer for cooler weather. Their activity is not limited to specific times of day or night. Sloth bear, Melersis, Ursus, Ursinus. Sloth bears, with their distinct stocky build and long, shaggy black hair, are immediately recognizable by the white hue or eye-shaped marking on their chests. Adapted to a unique lifestyle, these bears are perfectly equipped for climbing trees and excavating termite mounds thanks to their large lips, extended tongue, pale nose, and specially adapted hook-like claws. Their relatively smaller size compared to other bear species might well be an evolutionary response to the constant availability of their primary food sources, ants and termites. Unlike many of their ursine cousins who face seasonal fluctuations in food availability, sloth bears benefit from a steady supply, negating the need for accumulating large fat reserves or undergoing hibernation. This constant access to food allows them to maintain their activities throughout the year without the physiological demands and adaptations required for surviving long periods without nourishment. Sub-bear, Ursus malayanus. Among bear species, they are the tiniest, short, water-repellent black or dark brown fur and a yellow crescent on the chest characterize sun bears. Their powerful paws include exposed soles, and lengthy claws curve like sickles. One adaption that helps them retrieve termites from nests is their large tongues and flexible snouts. Their canines are the largest among bear species as compared to their overall size. Although sun bear's canine teeth are designed to rip flesh, they do not eat much meat. They can tear at trees to collect insects, or they can use their sharp teeth as weapons. 
Finally, Southeast Asian countries where sun bears are native include Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, People Democratic Republic, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, Thailand, and Brunei. To wrestle on a beer journey. Now let's talk about the life cycle of a bear. And since many of us are familiar with grizzly bears, they will be our reference point. Brown bears, Ursus arctos, include the grizzly bears as a subspecies. A grizzly bear cub starts off as a defenseless, furless ball, but it grows into a terrifying predator that can kill big game like elk and moose with a just single blow. Bears undergo a unique reproductive process that can span from 180 to 266 days before giving birth. During the abundant months of summer and fall, a female bear consumes as much food as possible to build up her fat reserves, crucial for her survival and that of her future offspring through the winter months. This phase of intense feeding temporarily halts the embryo growth. When it's time to nest, typically under a log, within a cave, or inside a hollow tree, the bear, physiological state undergoes significant changes. Her body temperature, heart rate, and breathing rate all decrease, though this state differs from true hibernation. Once the female is in this state, the egg starts to grow again, and by March, she will have given birth to one to four cubs. This cycle underscores the bear's critical role within the natural world. Beyond their immediate survival and reproductive strategies, bears significantly contribute to the health and vitality of their ecosystems. For instance, by dragging salmon carcasses across the terrain and dispersing their scat, bears effectively fertilize the forest floor, enhancing soil nutrition and promoting plant growth. Moreover, as bears consume nuts and fruits, they act as agents of seed dispersal, with each consumed piece potentially giving rise to new plant life, aided by the fertilizer provided through their scat. Additionally, bears play a crucial role in regulating the populations of other wildlife, such as deer and moose, while also aiding in the ecosystem's cleanup by scavenging carcasses. Living with humans, as the frontier between human civilization and the wild continues to blur, the likelihood of encounters between humans and wildlife, including bears, inevitably increases. Such interactions can lead to adverse outcomes for both parties involved. Bears, attracted by easily accessible food sources such as garbage and fruit trees within human settlements, can become a significant threat to both human safety and property. In response to these rising conflicts, Various bear management strategies have been employed to mitigate negative interactions. Among these approaches are aversive conditioning, translocation, land management, and, as a last resort, elimination. Aversive conditioning, which involves the use of deterrents like sound producers or rubber bullets, seeks to condition bears to associate human presence with negative experiences, ideally without causing them harm. However, its effectiveness is contingent upon its timely application, aligning with the bear's initial foraging for human-provided foods. Regrettably, when other methods fail, bear eradication becomes the chosen solution. This approach, though sometimes necessary, is too frequently employed and poses a substantial risk to bear populations. Moreover, it fails to address the root cause of human-bear conflicts serving only as a temporary and destructive fix. Threats and conservation. Beyond direct conflict with humans, bears face additional threats from illegal hunting for parts and products valued in traditional medicine, souvenirs, and the exotic pet trade, as well as from the impacts of climate change. These pressures have led to habitat alteration and food source. Disruption, severely affecting bear populations, particularly polar bears and those dependent on specific spawning patterns of salmon. Addressing these challenges necessitates a multifaceted approach. Prevention programs and educational initiatives that inform people about coexisting safely with bears are critical. British. Columbia has pioneered in implementing such educational programs, though assessing their effectiveness has been complicated by inconsistent evaluation methodologies. Furthermore, 
The creation and maintenance of protected areas and wildlife corridors are essential for preserving bear habitats and ensuring the connectivity and genetic diversity of bear populations. To combat the threats to bears effectively, concerted efforts must be made to enforce anti-poaching laws, raise awareness of the consequences of illegal bear part trade, and globally reduce greenhouse gas emissions to mitigate climate change impacts. In conclusion, bears play a vital role in ecosystems, and many of the threats they face are human-induced. However, there is hope, and everyone can contribute to bear conservation. Efforts in some capacity. Engaging with and supporting these initiatives can make a significant difference in ensuring the survival and well-being of bear populations worldwide.